Was that? It's not his fault. Who's then? No one. Come on. I didn't mean to say that. Not your fault either. You can't help the family you were born into. When it's congenital, it's not your fault. No. What's she talking about? Fits, I'm talking about. What? Your uncle's fits. My uncle's fits? What uncle? Well, which one was it, Brian? <laughs> you told her my uncle had fits. Oh, Mum! You did! Your cousin Jeff. Infant convulsions! What baby doesn't have infant convulsions? Well, none of the babies in our family for a start. Oh, well, I take that for granted, dear. What made you mention cousin Jeff like that? She'd just been family? telling me about the epilepsy in our family. I beg your pardon? So I felt I had to console her by mentioning someone on your side. You pick your time to throw it back, don't you? Epilepsy in our family? Where'd you get that? From you, Uncle Neville. Uncle Neville? Oh! Yes, <laughs> Uncle he Neville. He family. He happened to marry Auntie May, that's all. So our family is only epileptic by marriage. <laughs> but I will say this for May, she didn't have children. Mrs. Parry said to me, I think if you know there's a taint in the family, you should refrain from children. Well, she'd welcome any excuse, wouldn't she? That walking durex. <laughs> Please don't use language to me. Brian, you stand about like a mutt while she picks on your mother in car. Not you, Mum, Mrs. Parry. My best friend. You don't expect me to defend Mrs. Parry? <laughs> nurse, nurse, we've done it, I tell you. With this, we can make whole continents barren. The deterrent they've all been looking for. Mrs. Parry. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I thought you were serious for a moment. Come on, I'll take you home. What? Back to the nunnery? That's right, yes. Well, thank you. That's gratitude. I thought you couldn't start the car. No, but if I crank it... You mean you I didn't crank it before? I had oh, a tartan I, grip. Uh, and what about Jo? You leaving Freddie alone with her? Why, are you going somewhere? To call the doctor. No, I'll do that when I get back if you really want well, to bother me. do it her. now! She's unconscious! I'll only be gone 20 minutes. An hour! If we're lucky, she'll make tea. I shan't stop for tea. I've got some Gary Baldies. I know you do. <laughs> right. I'll ring from there. Can I do that? Have I ever said no to you? All right. No, we'll do it now. I'll do it. <gasps> While you're taking your mother home from a local phone box. Could you? Sure. You interfering bastard! I'm trying to help you! Help! You are a pain in the ass. I hate a play with language. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a threat, me, please? I might have one in my bag. What you're suggesting is no way out. There is no other possible way. Once start that, we'll have anarchy. That'll be something. Don't be childish. You must have order. Thou shalt not kill. Unless it shall come to pass that thy trade route shall be endangered. I sworn I had a threat me peace. Then thou shalt slay as many as possible of the enemies of General Motors and ICI. How about you, Freddy? I'm nothing but half crowns and pennies. My purse is upstairs. Suppose euthanasia was legalised and your daughter let die. Then 20 years from now, a cure is found. Any luck? Pennies and shillings. What's this? I can't see. It's a milk token. Just imagine. You mean her brain starts but working? Just give me a shilling. A six-week-old brain in a 30-year-old body. That's a halfpenny. <laughs> this light's so dim. No. Some kind of grafting. An adult brain? I don't know yet. Brian, have you got a threatening piece? So the brain of a, a woman who died at 30? Here's one. <laughs> Whose soul would she have? I think this question should go to our popular TV mini bishop. Mr. TV mini bishop. Would you, hey, 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 wait a minute. Uh, oh, Brian, for God's <laughs> What are we doing? I'll dial emergency the hospital. Yes, the ambulance. Stay at urgent. I'll show you the box. Put a coat on, though. It's bitter. You wrap yourself up properly, too, Brian, if you're running me home. Going out of the warm on a night like this is the best way if you want to catch cold. We came out of the Odeon, and it was cutting down Union Street like a knife. I said to Mrs. Parry, oh, my Lord, what a night. She said, they said we were in for something of the sort, possibly lasting into February. I said, it's a shame for the old people. <coughs> she said, Grace, I hate to remind you, but we're the old people now. I said, if I've got a sound about waiting for buses in this, I shall catch my death. I said, I may be old, but I'm not quite ready to go yet. So if you're running me, I should put on something warm because it's not so much the cold as the contrast. Talking to myself. 
<laughs> no, but it's an old car with no heater and drafts from all directions, and he's always been susceptible to colds. Well, if it's in your nature, I say it's nothing to be ashamed of. Where's Jim? Pardon? She was gone. How can she have gone? He's taken her. Where? We didn't say. Well, didn't you see him go? One minute I was talking oh, to him, next I was talking to myself. Ray! I expect he's put her to bed for a night. She shouldn't be sitting up here all hours. I thought that when I came in. Brian's dad used to say when he was getting on, Grace, I've had my life. If only I could give her what's left of me, I would. I believe he meant it too. Although, of course, as it turned out, there wasn't much left him because he died the following year. Hey! Ready, Mum? What? Ready to go, are you? I'm getting ready. Put your coat on. Aren't you going to put one on? No time. I'll get the engine started first. Well, you know what that engine's like. Get that started first. What have you done with Josephine? Brian! He's not up there. He's not anywhere. He must have gone outside. He's just been here. With you? No. Where's he gone? Out there. God! Oh, mind the cats. Ready, Mum? What on earth? Uh, Rush, have you got the car running? No, let's get inside. I'll push it if it won't go. Oh, mind you, don't strain yourself. Put your coat on, Mum. Sheila's just gone out to the garden after you. Get a move on. What have you done with the baby? Me, nothing. Hasn't Sheila got her? Sheila's looking for her. I've got to talk to Sheila about the cardigan. Not now, Mum. Come on. Well, why aren't you waiting for your friend to come? There's Sheila now. It's snowing now. Snowing? Oh, my Lord, Brian, I should put something on. Was he here? Where's he gone now? With Joe. Must have gone to the car. Did he have Joe with him? No, he hadn't seen her. He was rushing me off my feet. But I said, I must ask Sheila if she wants anything else done to Josephine's cardigan, apart from the sleeves. They're sending it out, Lutz. The front door is open. I, I met Pam coming in. Where's Brian? He's gone mad. He's running about outside with Joe. Outside? Do you know it's snowing again? I know. Oh, we didn't see it. The front door is open. Oh, God, it's... I think it's all over. What's all over? You look at it. What happened? I took her outside. And did what? Nothing, just left her lying on the back seat of the car. What for? Oh, my little worm. Oh, my poor little worm. It was something Mum said suggested Me? it. I never suggested taking no. on a night like this. No, but Is you, it likely? But you said it was bitter cold. I was going to leave her in the garden, but I couldn't. Can anyone do the kiss of life? I can't. In the end, I just left her lying in the car. I don't know what I wanted, just to stop them saving her Tell again. Tell you, sir, No, I can't. Oh, my poor dove. She's freezing. Well, the shock might have done it. Oh, my Lord, Brian, whatever made you do a thing like that? Have you got a looking glass? One in my handbag. Come on, little bird. <laughs> Come on. Come on, little dove. Oh, Brian, you shouldn't. Not however bad she was, poor little mite. You shouldn't deliberately do that. Here's a glass. Oh, come on, sweetheart. Now you drive her, mummy, now. Come on. It's going to be all right now. now perhaps the glass <laughs> isn't cold enough to get the condensation. A piece of fluff. What? A feather will show the slightest draft. This is ghastly. Is this a feather? Yes. There, close to her mouth. This is how we knew poor Dad had gone. Here they are. Don't say anything, anyone. I'll answer the questions. You concentrate on the child. There's no need for unnecessary suffering. All right. Sweet flower, come along now. Wouldn't she have been lovely if she'd been running about? Mm -hmm. 